So in addition to our wild Toledo program that involves our native pollinators and our native prairies, we have a lot of other conservation initiatives that include captive rearing of the lake sturgeon, surveying and conducting research on rare turtles, snakes, reptiles and amphibians. It also includes our mesopredator program. So we have a lot of uh, local conservation initiatives that don't all actually always make it to light. So we're in our lab and we started a Blanding's Turtle Head Starting Project. So what this is, is collecting eggs from female Blanding's turtles in Northwest Ohio, bringing the eggs into captivity, rearing them up until they're big enough so they're no longer at as high of a risk of predation, and then releasing them back to where the eggs were collected from. It's the goal of helping to kind of like augment the populations. Blanding's turtles throughout their range, they've been on the decline, mostly to wetland loss, but also things like habitat fragmentation. And the adult females are particularly vulnerable to roads because they're the ones that have to make these long distance movements to find their nests. We surveyed wetlands in 37 sites in northwestern Ohio. We found what we suspected is in a lot of these areas we don't see the younger age classes and this is a common problem with turtles with these factors like roads, high predation from nests because of subsidized predators. We tend to only see adults and these are what we call a ghost population where they only exist because you see those adults particularly in light of 15 years of surveys from the Toledo Zoo, we've reached the conclusion that, you know, they could benefit from having a head starting program. Right now, they have pretty much just hatched and absorbed their yolk sacs. So when they hatch, they have a little bit of a remnant of the yolk sac that feeds them when they're in the egg. And so for about a week, they sit in the incubator and they absorb that. And then we put them into these containers here and they've already started feeding voraciously and growing. Within a week, we've already seen a couple millimeters of growth as we feed them more and as they adjust their surroundings, we expect them to continue growing rapidly and um, pretty soon we'll move them into some bigger enclosures. We raise some of them a little warmer, some of them cooler, so we hopefully get a nice mix of males and females. They're about the size of a quarter and their, their shells are still soft. So by the time we release them, they'll be approximately a size equivalent of a two to three year old turtle and should hopefully reduce that predation risk. And then what we're gonna do is follow this up with um, some radio telemetry and some mark recapture so we can look at survival rates of the turtles that we're releasing and then we can use that information in an adaptive management strategy and adjust our plans for subsequent years. One of their most unique features is that they always look like they're smiling. It's the way their beak is parted up front and then kind of curves along the side. They're one of our wetland specialists and they're a really good indicator of how much of our wetlands we've lost. We've lost like 92% of our wetlands in Ohio, particularly the Great Black Swamp. Programs like these are made possible through ticket sales, donations, and a lot of other ways that people support the zoo. So the support of the public is, is essential for this, these kind of things. Knowing where these turtles are is very important for us and our partners. So if you see a Blanding's turtle, or you think you've seen a Blanding's turtle, you can contact us on our conservation page. You can email us at turtles at toledozoo.org, and you can send us in your sightings. And so far, that has actually been a really great way for us to identify other potential sites where we will go there and survey and add that to our list that we're working on to supply the state with some of this information for a listing.